Good afternoon, members, staff, trustees, and friends. My name is Alex Goodman, and I am the current board chair entering the second of my two-year term. After last week's gala, attended by over 300 guests, two exhibition openings this month with press, student, members, and ticket buyers, plus nine volunteer meetings in five days, uh, I'm more excited than ever about the work of this museum. You guys laugh about the meeting thing. <laughs> members like you ensure a thriving future for the arts, education, and inspiring moments. I'm glad we can gather in person to share updates, elect trustees, and highlight the power of community. Thank you very much for your membership and continued support. First, we have the pleasure of voting on a single slate of board trustees. I'm thrilled to introduce you to these dedicated volunteers who are not strangers to giving their time and expertise to the museum. First, Lisa Brooke, Lana Finley, and Ryan Finley. Next, Lena Garcia Siebold, Mark New, and Yale Popowich. And finally, Pat Ritz, Grace Serbu, Jeffrey Thomas, and Robert Troutman. The board's governance committee motions and seconds that we members approve this slate of trustees. If you are a member here in person, please raise your hand to approve. If you are at home on Zoom, please use the pop-up poll that you see on your screen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again for taking time out of your day to be with us and to learn what's happening. Portland Art Museum, as you well know, is the leading cultural institution in the state and region with hallmarks of innovation, excellence, and engaged partnerships. Your interest and support means so much to all of us and our community. Without you, there would be no museum. Now, please welcome Brian Fariso, Museum Director and Chief Curator. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, and good afternoon, everyone. This past year, we have seen a great deal of activity return to the museum, due in large part to a diversity and a relevant slate of exhibitions. In fact, over 300,000 visitors came to the museum in the last fiscal year, which includes 75,000 people visiting Queen Nefertari's Egypt, private lives, home, and family in the art of the Nabi Paris, 1889 to 1900, and VR expanded. And a record-breaking 150,000 people experienced Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera, and Mexican modernism. This exhibition in particular was extremely special for our community. And I know that many visitors became members to see these treasured works of art in person. Like many of our exhibitions, the museum team often creates partnerships with the community to deepen the experience and the exhibition's relevance. For Mexican modernism, we partnered with community members and local Latinx painters to create large-scale murals in the Schnitzer courtyard, as well as to develop a Spanish dual language activity guide for all ages. It has also been a momentous year for film and new media, as I think many of you know. The Northwest Film Center was renamed to reflect the expansive and unbound vision of the future. Pam Cut Center for an Untold Tomorrow was announced at the Cinema Unbound Awards in March. And the team has been bringing the vision to life in remarkable ways, which not only includes traditional film screenings, but also other media formats. Shortly, you will learn more about our upcoming exhibitions as well as reflect back on our accomplishments. At the museum, we are often asked how we measure success and has last year been successful? 
It is a very important question that often depends on a wide range of metrics, which are highlighted in today's meeting. Such metrics include, obviously, attendance, budget, investment performance, and the number of members, as well as were our exhibitions, programs, and new acquisitions relevant and reflective of the community? Have we established long-term partnerships? Are we stewarding our resources and finances responsibly? How are we supporting staff, the people who help us deliver the mission on a daily basis? We are also specifically measuring our progress towards the realization of the Connection Campaign, a project that will make the, our museum more inclusive and welcoming to all, which you will learn more about this afternoon. But first, let us reflect on the past year at the museum. And I'm happy to share a brief video. memories. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Julia Dolan, the Minor White Senior Curator of Photography, to share more about our, our activity in the last year. Julia.
Thanks so much, Brian, and good afternoon to all. The video we just presented captures so many wonderful moments from the past year and demonstrates just how many opportunities we offer to connect with one another through art. Today, as a senior curator representing our dynamic curatorial team, I'd like to share some examples of how we work together to address some of those metrics of success that Brian outlined earlier. We hope that the range of exhibitions and programs we've presented throughout the past year convey to you our continuing commitment to uplift work by artists who have historically been absent from our gallery walls as well as our goal of celebrating and centering artists who live and work in our community. From sustained partnerships with the folks at the Numbers FM radio station, who made the Aux Mute Gallery a vibrant space for Black Portlanders, as well as for museum visitors of all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds, to presenting the exhibition's Perspectives and Sherita Town, a Black Arts Ecology of Portland, we are working in ways that are new and exciting to us, and we are approaching collaborative projects with a willingness to experiment and take risks. This year, we return to integrating live art within the museum's galleries. Opacity of performance invited visitors to share the performance space with cast members who explored concepts such as visibility and object objectification as well as the complex dynamics that form between observers and artists. We also offered multiple opportunities to experience virtual reality, thanks to the creative vision of the team at the Museum's Center for an Untold Tomorrow, who brought immersive experiences like Venice VR Expanded and VR to Go to Portland. The annual Cinema Unbound Awards event presented by Pam Cutt is also reflective of our goal to celebrate artists who express themselves across mediums. We remain invested in broadening the scope of our permanent collection. Here are just a few of the new artworks that we have acquired this past year. This stunning bamboo, rattan, and lacquer bowl by Okitoshi, who is one of the few contemporary Japanese women artists working with bamboo is currently on view in the Japanese art galleries. A wonderful piece by the late Oregon-based artist Julie Green called An Embarrassment of Dishes celebrates the commonality of awkward moments. This cozy scene by Edouard Vuillard titled The Game of Checkers is a lithographic print that was included in the recent and significant exhibition Private Lives, Home and Family in the Art of the Nabi, Paris, 1889 to 1900. This thought-provoking work by Colombian artist Noemi Perez from the Palmar series, which grapples with the challenges of climate change and human displacement, is currently on view in our Jubit Center for Modern and Contemporary Art. The spectacular photographic self-portrait by Nikel de Vivo, who is covered in sparkling fabric while performing movements based on African and diasporic dances, demonstrates a desire to collapse time and space between the physical world and the spiritual. This work is also on view now in our American art hallway. And these hand-blown glass anchors by Lummi artist Dan Friday, which echo the stone fishing anchors once used by Lummi and other Coast Salish tribes, are on view in the Native American art galleries. In addition to acquiring art, we also deaccessioned nine objects that needed to return home. Deaccessioning means to withdraw, officially and with care, artworks that are part of the museum's permanent collection. These nine deaccessioned objects are culturally significant and necessary for ceremonial pur purposes for the Tlingit and Haida Indian tribes of Alaska, specifically the Tlingit clan based in Wrangell, Alaska. They were removed from their communities in the 1930s and purchased by the museum in 1948. This spring, before re repatriation took place in Alaska, tribal and clan representatives held a transfer ceremony at the museum. Our curator of Native American art, 
Kathleen Ash Milby said, quote, by returning these ancestral objects to their communities, we can begin to repair a complicated history between indigenous people and museums. It has been an honor to help with the final steps of this repatriation and see these ancestors finally swim home. Another way we are changing the way we work is through our commitment to joint curatorial and learning and community partnership staff positions. With major funding from both the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences and the Art Bridges Foundation, we have welcomed two fellows to the museum whose work is dedicated to building connections among our local and regional community and our exhibitions and collections. And now, I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Hannah Layson, Head of Youth and Educator Programs, who will share more about our work with educators, students, partners, and more. Hannah? Thank you, Julia. I am so grateful to be part of such a thoughtful and hardworking group of colleagues the exhibitions that we show, the art on our walls, and the experiences that we offer provide an amazing opportunity for deeper connection and reflection. That is where our work with community partners, educators, students, and artists really shines. For example, the murals that were created during Mexican modernism, the dual language hand-drawn activity book, the classroom tools and videos to accompany field trips are ways that we go beyond to inspire a love of learning and build human connections through art. Our public program offerings had an incredibly dynamic year, rebounding from the full pandemic year to 100 programs in all with nearly 11,000 participants. And the entire museum staff was elated to see students back in the galleries 17,500 students visited as part of a school or college group. In all, more than 45,000 youth and students visited the museum for free last year. Many educators used our robust digital and print resources to extend and deepen students' learning through classroom lessons before and after their visits. The Numbers FM radio station continued to be in residence at the museum, broadcasting and building community through on-air programs, an art gallery, a bodega, and more. The next iteration of their residency continues to take shape, and we couldn't be more excited to see where it goes. This past summer also saw the return of a wide range of events and activities. We were thrilled to have student programs like Portland State's Middle East Partnership Initiative back after pausing during the pandemic and to welcome summer campers with Centro Cultural de Washington County and Portland Public Schools. And the Portland Parks Foundation's Paseo event was able to fully launch in the South Park blocks outside the museum with performances, street vendors, and art making. This year, we were able to reintroduce our quarterly Miller Family Free Days and welcomed over 11,500 visitors, including a special showcase of students' visual and performing arts from Portland Public Schools, Forest Grove High School, and the Latino Network. It was an incredibly inspiring experience. Many of these programs and resources are made possible thanks to the support of our members. So thank you. And now we'll hear how the museum is stewarding our finances. Welcome Gareth Nevitt, Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Hannah. So, the year ended June 30th, 2022 was a very mixed year for us. On the one hand, we saw near record attendance for the exciting and varied exhibition program that you just heard about. While on the other hand, our earned revenue from the shop and event rentals continued to suffer from the lingering effects of the pandemic. 
This slide breaks out our operating revenues by source, and you can see the impact of the lifting of COVID restrictions earlier this year. In common with our museum colleagues around the country, we saw a surge in attendance as the masks came off. And as a result, our admissions revenue accounted for $3.7 million. This number was up 68% from financial year 2019, which was the last full year unaffected by the pandemic. I'll talk about membership in a second. Other earned revenue includes $1.8 million, which we received under the Paycheck Protection Program, and which we spent on keeping staff employed while we were closed. However, this category also includes event rentals, which only contributed $480,000 this year, a level that was only 20% of the 2.2 million generated in FY19. Contributions and grants includes further funding from the CARES Act under the Shuttered Venues Operators Grant, as well as 2.3 million for, to fund exhibitions and 3 million in unrestricted gifts to support the overall mission of the museum. Here we see the fluctuations in membership over the last four years. From a healthy 18,000 in FY19, membership was gradually eroded in both FY20 and 21 as a result of state-imposed closures and capacity restrictions. After bottoming out at around 12,000, we've seen a remarkable rebound since we reopened in July 2021, thanks to successive sellout exhibitions. We reached 21,000 by the end of June and have continued on to over 22,000 since then. Thanks are due to all our loyal members who stayed the course and continued to support us through some very difficult times. On the expense side, this chart illustrates that people are our most important asset. 57% of our budget is spent on staff salaries and benefits, including professional fees and consultants. Art purchases and exhibition installations accounted for 2.3 million, a figure that was up 47% from FY19. Also of note are occupancy expenses, which include $500,000 um, $500, in utilities to maintain the art in a climate controlled environment 24 hours a day. This slide shows the breakdown of our investment portfolio that has a balanced allocation across the various asset classes. This is designed to reduce risk while also providing the best possible return over time. And you can see the effect of that on the next slide. Although the return on the portfolio for the year was negative 8% because of the falls in the stock market, it was much less negative than our benchmark, which fell over 12%. We have outperformed the benchmark over all recent time periods. And since 2002, when the index began, we we're in the top 3% of all funds of our size. Over the year, we added 4.2 million in gifts to the endowment. These endowment gifts are so vital to our long-term sustainability because they produce investment income each year to help pay for our annual operating expenses. And in 2022, this income amounted to $3.1 million. Overall, we ended the year with a surplus of 2.7 million, which has been added to our reserves. And as we look forward to FY23 and beyond, with all its economic uncertainties, we're projecting a three-year plan to build back our staff and our revenues from admissions, events, and the museum store. These reserves will be critical in helping us to recover from the pandemic and to continue to fulfill our mission. And now back to Brian, thank you. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, I also continue to be extremely grateful to our members, donors, foundations, corporate sponsors who support this museum annually. Without you, none of this would be possible. Now, I know many of you are looking forward to learning more about the exhibitions and programs that are coming in the next year and beyond. So let us take a look on this video.
I am so thrilled to have Dakota Modern, The Art of Oscar Howe, and Jeffrey Gibson's They Come From Fire on view right now. Visitors who don't know Oscar Howe are in for a treat. His paintings are full of color, movement, and express his commitment to representing Dakota life and belief. His incredible career has inspired generations of Native artists, including Jeffrey Gibson, who has created a stunning site-specific installation inside and outside of the museum. You won't want to miss this multifaceted experience that includes 12 custom glass panels and a 45-foot photo collage featuring local members of our Native American, BIPOC, LGBTQ+, and other communities. You will also get a chance to see more of Jeffrey Gibson's work with an installation of To Name Another, a performance piece that includes 51 tunics with 51 matching high drums, each emblazoned with a short phrase like, they choose their family, and her bravery inspires. Exploring the intersections of identity, community, and injustice, a video in the gallery will show the work and performance since it was created in 2019. Have you ever wondered what the future holds and how we will continue to evolve? We can't wait to share the future of art and storytelling with our audiences starting this month with the U.S. debut of Dutch artist collective Polymorph's Symbiosis, a performative, multi-user, and multi-sensory installation where the human body is redesigned to merge with technology and nature itself. Be one of the first in the nation to experience symbiosis. Put on your haptic suit, VR headset, eat Michelin star cuisine, and be part of the groundbreaking, fully sensorial XR fun. Using all five senses, participants will transform into entirely new hybrid beings and envision a post-human world where there is no competition, only symbiosis. This project is a perfect embodiment of our new mission at Pam Cut Center for an Untold Tomorrow to change for whom, by whom, and how cinematic stories can be told. It's been 10 months since we announced this dynamic vision for the future, and our team is so pleased to be showing, and not just telling you all, about what it means in its many forms. It means shining a spotlight on the art of movies, animation, and XR stories at the Witzel Auditorium and pop-up summer cinemas. It means sold out youth summer camps in fashion, podcasting, gaming, and adult DJ classes too, in our collaboratory. It means our annual Cinema Unbound Awards honoring artists not content to be contained. And with our growing artist services programs, we help multifaceted storytellers in Portland and beyond sustain themselves creatively and financially. Hito Styrel is an artist who deals with the complexities of the digital world in our age of global capitalism and the implications that technologies like artificial intelligence have on society. This is the Future explores these themes and more in an immersive environment of video projection, sculpture, and augmented reality. A short narrative film sets the stage for the centerpiece of the exhibition, Power Plants, a series of sculptures that depict brightly colored, digitally morphing imagery presented on LED panels. Each fictional plant is generated by an AI neural network that predicts its evolution by creating and capturing its future state. The power plants appear to grow in a technologically enhanced garden rooted in a depleted landscape. They also suggest botanical remedies for current social, political, and ecological maladies. It will open in February, and I'm excited to share this smart, funny, critical, and ultimately optimistic vision of the future with all of you. Coming soon in 2023, the museum and Pam Cut will work together to present Guillermo del Toro crafting Pinocchio, showcasing the art, craft, and storytelling of his newest film, the wildly reimagined Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. The exhibition is coming to us from the Museum of Modern Art in New York and draws on the talent and creative collaboration of cinematic animation artists based right here in Portland at Shadow Machine, who helped realize his vision over the last four years.
Black Artists of Oregon is an exhibition that we have been planning for nearly two years, and I'm so pleased that visitors will soon be able to celebrate the work of Black artists in and outside of our collection. It is the first exhibition of its kind to consider the work of Black artists collectively in Oregon, artists who have historically been underrepresented and unacknowledged. Beginning in the 1920s through today, the exhibition captures the African-American experience specific to the Pacific Northwest. Intizar Abioto will be guest curating the exhibition. She will bring her knowledge, passion of research, and care to this important legacy in this project. We are so excited to bring Africa Fashion to Portland from Victoria and Albert Museum in London. This exhibition celebrates the richness and diversity of African creativity, cultures, and histories through the lens of fashion, and explores the vitality of a fashion scene as dynamic and varied as the continent itself. Visitors will see an extensive display of garments, textiles, photographs, sketches, and video, and experience the creativity, ingenuity, and global impact of contemporary African fashions. These exhibitions and experiences are part of a much larger program, as I'm sure you know, of gallery, collection rotations, loans, smaller scale installations, lectures, tours, and hands-on learning opportunities. Reflecting on how we are evolving to meet the expansive role of museums in our community, I'm also pleased to share an important update about the transformation of our campus. John Cotton Dana, the former director of the Newark Museum from 1909 to 1929, and who is often cited as the visionary leader for the modern day museum, once said that a museum is only as good as its use. Dana also believed that a museum needed to be porous and function more like a library rather than an attraction, whereby the citizenry moved freely in and out of the institution to learn from cultures throughout the world and time. Unfortunately, as I think you know, most people still find themselves lost in the Portland Art Museum's labyrinth, and many never even find their way to the contemporary galleries. The new Mark Rothko Pavilion will make our museum more inclusive and accessible by connecting our two buildings through a new central glass pavilion and renovating spaces within our two historic buildings. Here is a brief overview of the project. When the founders built our main building during the Great Depression, they knew our community would need an art museum to inspire, educate, and connect us across time and place. In the 130 years since, we have grown alongside our community. For the next century, your Portland Art Museum will continue to provide access to the arts and programs for all ages and evolve to meet the needs of our ever-changing city and state. In the year ahead, we will be publicly launching the Connection Campaign, which will better connect our buildings, connect even more people with art, and connect our museum more deeply with our community. I'm so pleased to share this important update with our members. First, the campaign will transform our campus by linking our buildings through a new central glass pavilion, the Rothko Pavilion. This once in a generation project will also provide extensive renovations to existing spaces within our museum that have been inaccessible and difficult to navigate for decades. Once it is complete, the experience of visiting our museum will be drastically improved. There will be new above ground connections across all four floors, new universally accessible entries on the west and east sides, new elevators and restrooms, two new outdoor spaces, a safer location for the loading dock and more. In all, we are adding and renovating 95,000 square feet. We expect construction on the Rothko Pavilion to begin in 2023. We will remain open and in fact have an exciting slate of exhibitions and programs planned. Please stay tuned in the year ahead 
and you can expect to hear more information about the transformation of our campus and how you can get involved in making our museum more accessible for all. Thank you. This much needed project has been worked on for over a decade and I'm pleased to share that we will begin construction of the pavilion by moving the loading dock to Southwest Jefferson Street beginning in February of 2023. The next milestone will be breaking ground for the pavilion in late 2023 and we are committed to remain open during construction. We will also keep our members and visitors informed throughout the process so please stay tuned to your inbox, our website, and social media channels for all the latest information. Thank you again, our members, for your support. I hope that you will continue to renew your memberships and join us in the galleries and at our programs in the months and years ahead. Please also be sure to join us for the members open house tomorrow evening. And if you haven't booked your tickets to symbiosis, be sure to do that as well. Again, Thank you and have a great day.